Thanks, Russ. You know, this is the first time I've actually been able to hear well, anything that he's actually said about me before the show because the speakers are better here. I can get in front of the stage here. So uh, thank you. I don't know why you're telling lies about me, but I mean, <laughs> thank you all for letting me back on stage. Um, the sh story I want to tell you tonight is uh, part of a new universe that I'm working on with some friends of mine, such as my good friend Michael over there. Uh, it's my first real endeavor into sci-fi since when I was a teen. teen. So um, this is a short story that I have recently finished and adapted towards stage. It's called The Encounter. Michael reached the top of the hill, bent over, panting, gasping for breath. He stood and looked off in the distance at the crimson clouds forming. Purple lightning leaped across the surface of the deadly storm. He was just entranced by the play of light and shadow. I mean, he knew it was dangerous to be up here. If the poison rain showed up before he could make it to shelter, he would be dead in minutes as the toxins burned through his flesh and lungs. But the beauty of it all, no one dared come up here. Behind him, the klaxons in the town began the morose whine. The eerie sound broke him from his fascination and he looked around and a cold chill swept through his body. The storm had formed around him while he was gazing off in the distance. Oh no said Michael. He turned and he ran back towards the town. As he ran, the air grew thicker and choked his lungs and the static electricity raised the hair on the back of his neck. Overhead, the poison clouds defeated the sun and the sky grew dark. Finally reaching the town, he found an abandoned gas station and dove inside, slamming the door behind him just as the raindrops began to fall. He collapsed to the ground, coughing. <coughs> Michael stood and took stock of his surroundings. The shelves were barren. All the goods long since scavenged by the starving survivors of the war with the Anu. Anything that was left is covered with dust. <coughs> Michael walked to the windows, gazed outside. The fat green drops of poison splashed onto the ground vaporizing and slowly turning to a rolling green mist. How could anything so beautiful be so deadly, Michael mused. Then he saw a figure in a cloak running down the street. The figure stopped and turned around frantically. Michael's heart skipped a beat. That cloak wouldn't last long in this rain. Hey! Get out of the rain, come on! Michael held the door open as the stranger dove inside and secured it behind him. The stranger collapsed in the corner, coughing. Michael looked for a towel while the stranger recovered and he found an old box of napkins. Here, try to get some of that off of you. Man, what were you doing out there in that? That's crazy, even for me. Wouldn't it let me in? Michael thought the voice was a little strange and distorted, but perhaps it was just from breathing the mist. Then he saw the stranger stand. He was abnormally tall. Michael began to feel uneasy, backed away, stumbling into a counter. The stranger removed his cloak. His skin was pale, but it glowed with an eerie light as if lit up from the inside. His hair was long and white, and his eyes, much larger than a human's, were dark, disturbingly dark. Thank you, friend. I would not have lasted long out there. I am Paku. Michael shuffled away. I, I, I've never met an Anu before. He scanned around looking for a weapon. He found an old pipe on the ground. I'm not going to let you hurt me. 
Paku gazed at him and I'm not here for that. I'm here to meet your mayor. Michael was confused. Our main mayor? Why? Why would the mayor want to meet you? Your people are dangerous. You don't belong here. Paku shook his head. I am no more dangerous than you. Your mayor uh, understands this. That is why we are working to make things better for all of you. Michael was incredulous. No. No, I know the mayor. She's smarter than this. You can't be trusted. You're murderers. You tried to destroy us. You caused this. Paku sighed. What is your name, human? Michael, why do you care? Well, Michael, you are right. We did try to destroy you. Although I do not know why I was very young then. The people who made those choices were killed by your soldiers. But I know that we did not make the ring. Your people did that. Michael just shook his head. No, you're a, you're a liar. Why would, we do, why would we do this to ourselves? You tell me, why did we do this? I do not know. Your people were desperate. Perhaps we would have done the same thing in your shoes? They fired a weapon at us that we could not defend against. It destroyed our ships and left us stranded here with you. And it also brought the rain. No, 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 no. My dad was there. He told me what happened. He told me you guys lost and you started this as your final revenge. This was your fault. Believe the lies if you wish. The rain is stopping. I must go see your mayor. Paku picked up his cloak and headed towards the door. Michael reached out. Wait! You never did tell me why you were seeing the mayor. I have discovered how to make those rains stop forever. Thank you, Michael, for saving me. Thank you for saving all of us. And Paku walked out the door, leaving Michael staring, stunned, after him. Thank you.